Immigration and our region's relationship with Mexico generated lots of local stories in 2012. Joining me to talk about those stories are our front terrace reporters, Adrian Florido and Jill Replicle. Adrian and both Jill, you have been so busy this past year, but let's start with you, Adrian. Give us a little summary of what's happened uh, as far as immigration reform in uh, 2012. Well, one of the biggest stories of 2012 uh, came over the summer when the president announced a new policy to deal with young undocumented immigrants who had arrived in the U.S. as children by no fault of their own. Their parents had brought them, but who nonetheless were, had undocumented status and so couldn't, you know, for example, go to school, get scholarships, get jobs. Uh, what the president announced over the summer was called the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, which basically was a kind of a policy tweak that would allow people under the age of 30 who arrived before the age of 15 by no fault of their own and had gone to school, allowed them to stay in the country temporarily for a period of two years uh, without fear of deportation and also to get a work permit to allow them to have jobs for the first time in their lives legally here in the U.S. So this was an important kind of step forward in terms of um, this large movement of uh, immigrant activists who have been trying to get the U.S. to adopt kind of more modern uh, sort of ways of dealing with uh, the large undocumented immigrant population. This obviously dealt with just one small portion, which is young undocumented immigrants, but uh, but they see it as a step in the right the right direction. There were some other steps made in Jill uh, in Mexico, the, the, the war on drugs. Um, how is this past year compared uh, to other previous years? Well, if we, if the numbers, you know, and the numbers are always in dispute, but if we sort of continue on the path that um, that the year has taken, it's, it's probably going to be the first decline in deaths related to the war on drugs in the past six years. Um, about 18 percent is what, what the most recent estimate that I've seen. And violence has definitely been down in Baja and on our border, um, also in Chihuahua where Ciudad Juarez is. So in a lot of the border areas, they've seen a decrease in violence. A lot of that violence has moved to states more inland in Mexico, but overall, um, it seems like things are getting a little bit calmer. Certainly, many of your stories actually have talked about sort of this sort of apparent decline. But Mexico also elected a new president uh, this year. What is he saying about uh, the drug war and kind of what he might be doing uh, coming in 2013? He did a pretty good job of, of not making it his main focus during the campaign, probably because it, you know, sort of a, a, a losing topic uh, going into the elections. But he, he basically has not said that he's going to make any major changes from what the previous president did, but he is saying that he's going to focus more on violence, on preventing violence to ordinary citizens, and some are interpreting that as that he won't crack down on the credit cartels as hard as um, Calderon, the last president, did, uh, as long as they, you know, keep the peace. So we'll see what plays out on that. Um, people are happy that, that, you know, that he's has that focus and then we'll see what happens with um, legalization here in the states because the fact that Colorado and Washington just voted to legalize marijuana definitely had an impact in Latin America and uh, Peña Nieto, the, the Mexican president, says that he's against legalization but he's also called for reevaluation of the whole drug war strategy because if we have legal marijuana here, you know, it's hard for Mexico to know how to deal with that on their end. Certainly, it'll change some of the dynamics going back and forth. Adrian, let's let's come back to the immigration reform. Hey, anything uh, coming up as far as in 2013 that you see as sort of things we should watch or monitor that, uh, that you expect to be happening? Well, the biggest story the morning after uh, President Obama's re-election was the fact that the Latino community, <coughs> excuse me, that the Latino population had uh, been uh, sort of critical, instrumental in getting him re-elected, right? And this was a big wake-up call for the Republican establishment in the country. Um, uh, they realized that if they want to continue to be a relevant party in American political society, that they have to uh, they have to start reaching out to Latinos. And so this um, was a realization that they made, and Republicans are suddenly serious about doing something about the immigration um, sort of problem that the U.S. has. And so immigration reform has be become a top priority in the sort of legislative year ahead, and it's going to be very, um, very much top priority for both parties to get some kind of comprehensive immigration reform done. I think another interesting story to watch in the next year is going to be the way that uh, this key legislative 
um, uh, this key piece of legislation, Obama's health care reform, is going to intersect with possible immigration reform because if nothing happens uh, with immigration reform, then once Obama's health care reform gets implemented, the only real population within the United States that's going to still be uninsured is going to be the undocumented population. And so it'll be interesting to see how these two kind of pieces of legislation interact in, in the coming years. So that's something we're going to be following pretty closely on the Frontera's desk. All right, a lot of good stories. I'm certainly in 2013. We'll be looking forward to hearing from both of you, uh, Frontera's reporters Adrian Florido and Jill Replegal. Thanks so much for uh, giving us this wrap-up. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks.